Good morning. On behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, welcome to Be Ye Holy Ministries. praise hallelujah come on and let's give God some praise hallelujah hallelujah this is the day that the Lord has made and I'm going to choose to rejoice and be glad in it we have another awesome lesson on tonight experiencing God in prayer experiencing God in prayer we truly thank God for each one of you being here in the house of the Lord just one more time. This is lesson three, our third week of Bible study. We truly thank God for our leaders. We thank God for Elder Edwards and his beautiful wife, Tammy, Mother Scott, and my own mother being here in the house on tonight. We truly give God all honor and praise for you. Uh, taking out the time to come and fellowship with us. We thank God for all our YouTube viewers, our Zoom viewers, and Facebook viewers. We want to say that we truly thank God for you joining in with us on tonight. And our topic, once again, it is experiencing God in prayer. And I am none other than Sister Stacy. And we're going to go ahead on and have a word of prayer. Most heavenly and gracious Father, God, we just want to say thank you for another night of Bible study, oh God. We thank you that you allowed us to come safe and sound, oh God, without any hurt, harm, or danger, oh God. We thank you for keeping us throughout the day, oh God. God, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for who you are, oh God, our Redeemer, our Restorer, our Waymaker, oh God. We thank you that we can come to the throne of grace boldly, oh God, even now in the name of Jesus. God, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you're getting ready to do, oh God, even now in the name of Jesus. God, we're asking that you have your way in this Bible study lesson on tonight, oh God, as we delve deeper into your word. God, we're asking that you have your way. Use these lips of clay like never before, oh God in thy son Jesus name we pray amen and amen our devotional reading is coming from John the 14th chapter the 5th through the 21st verse John the 14th chapter the 5th through the 21st verse John 14 verses 5 through 21 and it says thomas said unto him lord we know not whither thou goest and how can we know the way jesus said unto him i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me so if you think that you're going to get into heaven you're going to have some gate trouble because you cannot go to god until you go unto you go to the son first. That's the way. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So don't think that you're going to get to God with, by bypassing Jesus. Amen. It says, if you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and how saith thou then, Show us the Father? Believe it thou not that I am the Father, and the Father in me, the word that I speak unto him, Unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. So Jesus is letting the disciple know that, hey, you have already seen God because you are looking right at me. And it says, believe it thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verse 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. 
So if you believe in Jesus, he's already saying, you see the works that I have done. And he's already letting you know, greater works shall ye do. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall, ab- and shall be in you. So if you love the Lord, if you're saying that, hey, I love you, Lord, but you're being disobedient, you're not doing what the word says, then the Father is not in you because you're not being obedient. If you love me, it's saying that ye will keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. So if you're out there lying, cheating, and stealing, are you really doing the will of the Father? It says, if ye love me, you see that word, if, I, F, if ye love me, keep my commandments. So we're saying that we love the Lord, so guess what? Keep his commandment. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. So Jesus is letting them know that even once he departs, that he's going to send a comforter, and we know that comforter is the Holy Spirit. For yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandment and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall love my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him." That is the devotional reading. Devotional reading came from John, the 14th chapter, the 5th through the 21st verse. Are there any comments on our devotional reading before we go into our lesson on tonight? John, the 14th chapter, the 5th through the 21st verse. Let's do what the Bible says for us to do. God has already given us the commandments, and that is the word of God. If you're going to do what God is saying you should do, that we should do, then we need to keep his commandments. We need to be obedient and trust that God is going to do just what he said he was going to do. Are there any comments, any questions at this time? Moving. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I was listening. It's just as good. We see um, you know, whether in the Old Testament or we see the New Testament, we see uh, God with them and, and God in us. And, and the point of comment is we see where it is that I, I love, we had a lesson a while back where it is that God, you know, he will never um, abandon you, though he will distance himself from you. And we, we have to make a distinct position from those who have truly received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and been redeemed and find themselves in a disobedient state versus those that have not received Christ at all and or I was just going to say those that have not been redeemed. Um, you have the believer and you have the unbeliever and where it is that when once you're his, I say God is faithful to keep you. Amen. Yes. And I hear, I hear him tell Paul, you know, he said, my grace is sufficient where it is that we, as a true believer, we mm-hmm. don't willingly go out and do those things. Yes. So that goes to the heart. It's not for me to judge or concern myself with where it is that God understands and knows exactly who you are and those that are his. And if you are his, you know, just by, you know, I say you would not we find from a sinful nature standpoint what is it was against the flesh but for you we have came to a point where that we find ourselves seeking to get closer to God not draw far uh, away from him so um, my point is we see here um, here where those that are his we see God's protection those that are his we see God's faithfulness those that are his we see God's love and it's just incumbent upon us whether or not we will reach or we will lean toward that everlasting, you know, power, that everlasting protection, that everlasting provision. Amen. Amen. If you are his, you have joy. 
If you are his, you have peace. You know, even though things may arise, you still, if you have the love of God down on the inside of you, you will not allow whatever it is to shake you, to shake your faith or to cause you not to abide in the word of God or not to love on the Lord. Amen. So experiencing God in prayer. We're going to go ahead and go into our background reading. First Samuel 31. First Samuel, the third chapter, the first verse, verses 10 and verse and verses 10 and 19. So first Samuel, the third chapter, verse one. And then we're going to go into verses 10 through 19. Psalms, the 51st chapter and the 11th verse. Isaiah 26 and 9 and Revelations 1 and 10. So at this time, Mother Scott, if you don't mind reading Psalms, the 51st chapter and the 11th verse. Michael, if you don't mind, Isaiah 26 and 9. Isaiah, the 26th chapter and the 9th verse. And Elder Edwards, if you don't mind reading Revelations, the first chapter and the 10th verse. And 1 Samuel 3 and 1, Tammy. And then we're going to read in unison verses 10 through 19. So you see I skipped around. So Mother Scott, Psalms 51 and 11. Michael, Isaiah 26 and 9. Elder Edwards, Revelations 1 and 10. Sister Tammy, 1 Samuel 3 and 1, and we will read verses 10 through 19 together. Amen. And when you have it, I'm asking that you do stand with your mic, please. So Psalms 51 and 11, Mother Scott. Praise the Lord. Psalms 51, verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Isaiah 26 and 9, Michael. My soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. When your judgment come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. Revelations 1 and 10, Elder Edwards. Amen. Praise the Lord. Revelations 1 and 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Amen. First Samuel 3 and 1, Sister Tammy. First Samuel 3 and 1. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And now we're going to begin reading verses 10 through 19. I'll read verse 10, and I'm asking that you read verses 11, and we will move on from then. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears and everyone that heareth shall twinkle. It shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever, forever, and the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vow, and restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli, that the iniquities of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel laid unto the morning, and opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel, and said, Samuel, my son, and he answered, Here am I. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God, God do so to thee, 
and more also, if thy hide anything from one me of all things that he said unto thee. Verse 18, and Samuel told him every wit, and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord, and the Lord was, was with, with him. him. And he did let none of his words fall to the ground. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and most of all, the doers of his holy word. And that was 1 Samuel, the third chapter, the first verse, and verses 10 through 19. And as we know, um, I am one that goes, uh, try to break down the topic uh, of the lesson, and it's experiencing God in prayer experiencing god in prayer experiencing experiencing god in prayer it says experience means to participate or to participate in or undergo to be emotionally or aesthetically moved by or learn by experience it means the definition, with the definition of experience, put them together and apply them to our relationship with God, we come up with something like participating in the nature of God, being moved by him, and learning of him by familiarity. Familiarity. Here we go. There we go. And then we already know what prayer is. That is communication with God. That is talking to God. Just as though we're having conversations one with another, we can commune with God. We can have conversations with God, and God will talk back to us. We just need to sit and just want to listen and do what it is that he has told us to do. Don't be so quick to move when God is speaking or when you have finished speaking, then all of a sudden you want to get up, not giving God the opportunity to share with you what it is that he wants to say. Prayer is to engage God in a dialogue where we literally speak to him and listen to what he says. Amen. To experience God is to be in an interactive relationship with him. This thing is active. We are communicating. We are dialoguing one with another. Yes, sir. I see your face, Elder Edwards. Yes, sir. Amen. Um, so as, as I love the definition you said, uh, communicating with God. And um, as I see the believer, and I see those that were called out, and we see God um, uh, holistically. We, we know that God is omniscient, God is omnipresent, God is everywhere, but we're talking about those and talking about having effective communication with God. So, so in the context of communication, is it safe to say at some point when we pray, um, are we praying to reestablish communication? To establish communication? Yeah. yeah. Because we've lost communication, we've 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 start dwelling in ourselves. If we start dwelling in ourselves, I mean our communication has been slack because we're not communicating with God. So what happens then? If you're not communicating with God, how is God gonna communicate with you? Amen. So did I answer your question, sir? I want to make sure I answered it correctly. Or Hey Amen. I really was asking, you know, is it that we always walk in the spirit? And I believe where it is that we are called, where we have, you know, been redeemed, the, the question for me comes, do I always walk in the spirit? Mm -hmm. When I'm walking in the spirit and you're doing the things that God called, uh, uh, well, I'm going to use me, when I'm doing the things that God called me to do, amen, inherently, obviously, I do have effective communication. I am listening. And I am doing the things that I see the Father do, amen, where it is that we see Jesus, amen. He always did. He only did what he's seen the Father do. 
And we see that he was never disconnected in that context where it is that he was obedient to death. Where I realize if we're just obedient, you said I heard you, you quoted a lot of scriptures earlier. You said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. Well, we see that through Jesus' love, he kept the commandments. He did all that God called him to do unto death. Where likewise, when we do those things and uh, that God called us to do, uh, you know, saying we'll find out that now we do have that effective communication. But the truth of the matter is, as we talk, a lot of times we choose for whatever the reason, and I'm, we're not, I'm not here to debate or, or talk about the reasons or the excuses that we have. We find ourselves sometime in ourselves or mm -hmm. we find ourselves where it is. I, we were in John, um, I see, uh, and um, you had me read Revelation. And we know that John Turner, y'all hear me use it a lot. Um, he heard a voice as if it was a, a trump, trumpet, right? Mm -hmm. right? And we know that trumpet represents authority, amen? Mm -hmm. And we see the trumpet, you know, we know when Jesus comes, and, some, and he it said he turned and immediately we understand that he was caught up in the spirit. So we see now on the Lord's day, so we see that John was what? In the spirit yes. on the Lord's day, amen? Mm -hmm. So again, you know, do we always find ourselves in the spirit? For me, I'm going to answer the question. I find I say, well, when I choose not to be in myself and I yield to the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and not my own intellect, my own mindset, my own feelings, glory to God. And at some time, the truth of the matter is I, I find myself if I dwell on things outside of the scripture, outside of God, I could find myself in myself and not dwelling in the spirit. And at that point, you hear me, God, I pray for my unbelief. Yes. When we begin to, and I'm, I'm going to begin to talk about Samuel, I do not want to uh, not have everyone to share. So if I miss you, please say, Sister Stacy, I have something. Amen. So it says, when you experience God, this is a lifelong process. This is not something that, oh, I experienced him today. I'm not going to experience him tomorrow. But this is something that is lifelong because it's a learning process. We are ever learning more about Jesus by becoming so intimately acquainted with him that we joyfully, can you say joyfully, that we joyfully yield our lives to him because we have come to know him and trust him completely. So when you yield yourself over to God, are you doing it half-heartedly? Or really, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to do it so I can be obedient. But he is saying that he came joyfully to, he yielded his life joyfully. I'm not, I'm not kicking and screaming as I'm coming to the Lord, as I'm yielding my life over to Lord. Why? Because I want that intimate relationship with him. I want that one-on-one -on -one relationship with him I want to know about his character even the more I want to know that God is love which is in first John 4 and 8 God is love God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son for us God loves us so much that he knows the very number of hairs that is on our head God loves us so much that he gave us yet another opportunity to get it right with him. Even when we're in our unbelief, God is there and he will help you in your unbelief. Yes, sir. And so that I'm not loose with that, you know, I was having some conversation earlier. We look at unbelief. When I'm talking unbelief, I'm talking about when it is, I, I clearly um, uh, understand, have came to the illumination, have been presented with the word of God, and at that moment in time, I'm choosing to operate um, uh, in, 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 as a disobedient spirit. I'm choosing um, to not do the things that I've been called to do um, that I am fully aware of and um, or, you know, that God has, you know, um, it just illuminated in me, but you know, it's just something in me. It's got such a stronghold that I'm just choosing not to do it. Or, you know, or likewise, it could be something where it is a growth thing, where it is that you know maturity thing, where I just have not matured to a point where that my faith has developed to the point 
um, in the context of belief, not in the context of general aspect where it is when I say belief that I'm acknowledging God, uh, that I, one, one who acknowledges God, one versus who does not acknowledge God or believe in God. That's not, not from that sense. I'm talking about one that who has acknowledged God, but now their state, there is such a state where it is they're, they're denouncing um, 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 <clears throat> the spirit of God. Amen. 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 I need God even the more. Lord, I'm desperate for you. Lord, I long for you. I long to be in your presence. And it says our central verse is, Hear my voice, O God. In my prayer, preserve my life from fear of the enemy. And that was in the King James Version. And it says, Hear, my, hear me, O God, as I voice my complaints. Protect my life from the threat of the enemy. And we know here, uh, um, David was writing, and he was like, even as I began to voice my complaint, God, I want you to hear me. I want you to hear my heart. I want you to hear the words that I'm beginning to speak out of my mouth. He's asking God to protect him, even from the threat of the enemy. How many of us have some enemies out there that want to cause to do us harm? But God is our protector. God is our healer. God is our way maker. And he would do just that. He will make your enemies your footstool. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When I look and, and as I was, you know, doing the reading and I had Psalm 16 and I wrote some things out and we see it started out and it said, preserve me. And um, and and in my study and conversation, I came to understand. Said God, keep me safe. Yeah. And man, then we see the invocation of His God, and He immediately goes, you know, and you know, from the the impression of a laminate, He goes into, uh, you know, now He says, "For in Thee do I put my trust." Amen. Yes. Can we see? the confidence and can we see i mean it's just wonderful when i can we see that he his refuge he he's found david's found refuge in yes. god amen um so i just wanted to point that out for in thee do i put my trust yes. but it starts out and it says preserve me keep me lord amen keep me safe amen and where it is that you know a lot of time we start out that way as well when we find ourselves in imminent danger of, of, of it when we see ourselves being, um, you know, um, you know, pushed by the world for one reason or another, or we just, just use it just in, in general, we see imminent danger, whatever that may be, you know, or is our focus the imminent danger or our immediate focus? Is it God? In thee do I put my trust. Yes. Amen. These things exist. I let God, I'm acknowledging that. Yes. It's true. It's fact. And literally, they exist. I'm seeing them every day. I might be experiencing it right now to some degree, but guess what? In thee, but I put I put my trust in you, God. Yes, yes. Amen. And I can see David here say, but in thee, yes. amen, I put my trust. Yes. So in, in the midst of everything, will you trust the Lord that even as your storm may arise, even as there may be sickness in the family, even if there's a death in the family, will you put your trust in the Lord? Even when your finances are not right, will you go to God in your prayer closet? Even if you're not able to make it to your prayer closet, I'm laying on my bed. Will you trust me to bring you through this? Will you trust me to bring you through that? No matter what what it may look like will you have that intimate one-on-one -on -one time with me to let me know what's on your heart to let me know that hey this is going on I know God knows everything but God wants us to come to him and talk to him why so that he can share with us the good news of, hey, I'm going to bring you out. You're going to be more than an overcomer. I love you just this much. Will you trust me to bring you through? Will you trust me to bring you out? And I'm looking at a key term of the word for experience, and it says direct observation of or participation uh, in events as a basis of knowledge, the fact or state of having been affected by or gain knowledge through direct observation or participation. So will you have that time that, God, I'm going to lay aside this time just so I can commune with you and you commune with me? Or are you going to go ahead on and jump up out the bed late in the midnight hour when it seemed like you just can't go back to sleep? 
like what is really going on, Jesus. This is my time. When I know I have to get up in two more hours, Mother Scott, and God is saying, I want to talk to you. Will you trust him and just get on out the bed and go to wherever you normally would go and allow him to commune with you? Or are you going to roll back over? Hold on, Jesus, I got two more hours. And I'm going to give you that time because I know it's going to be time for me to get up and I'm going to start my day. And I'm going to give you five minutes before I begin to start my day. After everything is running on in your mind, because guess what? We probably got, oh, I got this to do. I got this to do. Oh, I, I put, put out my clothes already. So, But are you going to trust God to spend time with him? He's asking you for that one-on-one -on -one time with him so that you can become more intimate with him, experiencing God in prayer. Have you ever been to the point where, okay, I'm going to give God this allotted time right here. I'm going to go into prayer. I'm going to go into my word. And I, I got 30 minutes or I got 20 minutes allotted out. And then all of a sudden you're in prayer and that prayer gets so good till you see that an hour has passed or you're in your word and now two hours has passed, but I got to do this, I got to do this. But I cannot let go of the word of God. I cannot let go of this prayer. Why? Because it was just so good. I was enjoying my time with the Lord. And then all of a sudden hours have passed away. Have you ever been there to where you have experienced God in that manner to where it just got so good to you till you just did not want to let it go? Are there any questions, any comments at Hello. this time? Yes, yes. I'd like to like comment if you don't know. <laughs> I'm loving this uh, as, as you, you uh, teaching tonight. tonight. Uh, I just, I just had a had couple of points. points. I love something, and I'm trying, I'm trying to look, to look for a key, key focus. focus. As you, As you start, start off with the devotion the reading, reading, and then you, you look, look at, at all the scriptures, scriptures. And, and, and as, as I, I notice, notice you, you're, you're doing, doing an excellent an job in application, application, in my understanding, my understanding today. today. Uh, Trust in God, God whatever. whatever. But, but as Jesus was speaking, did not Jesus call the disciples? If he calls someone, is it not God's responsibility to keep them? And, and I, look I look at, at all, all the scriptures, scriptures Samuel, Samuel Song, Revelation, and, and one, one question, question comes to mind. mind. Did not, not God, God call them? them. And, and I believe, I believe as, as children of God, God regardless, regardless of what, what we think or go through, through, God, God is, is still responsible for upholding his own word and those he called. I like the lesson tonight. Whenever, Whenever we find we ourselves that you gave a definition of prayer, prayer communication, communication with God. With God. And I and hear, I hear um, the brother, brother the um, minister, minister speak of, of those in him and, and believe in him. him. The, the moment, moment we, we accept, accept Jesus Christ, Christ is, is it we, we keep, keep ourselves as his obligation to keep us, regardless of what we do. do. Well, well, I'm, I'm trying, trying to go, to go here. here. All, All the scriptures I see. Each, Each one, one of those, those situations, situations in those scriptures that you read, read was, was it that that, that person, person was praying, praying seeking God, God, or he, he they understood, understood who that was, was in God, God as, as children of God, God. and whatever, whatever state, state they, they found themselves, themselves in, they, they call, call on God. God. And as and they, they call on God, God because they were the children of God, they experienced God. Other, Other words, words, they died, they died to, themselves to themselves and seeking, and seeking something, something greater than themselves. Is anyone else can see that, that in, the, in them scriptures? scriptures? We, we tend, tend to, to focus, focus on more of situations. situations. We do we face situations and circumstances in this world. world. But, but then what is the will of God for each and every one of us as children of God? Does he, Does he not, not want us, us to participate, participate in, in kingdom, kingdom works? works. Mm -hmm. Not, not ours. ours. We, we get frustrated in ours. ours. But, but if we're if doing, doing kingdom, kingdom work, work, we should, we should never, never get, get frustrated. frustrated. And, and the only, only way, way we can, we can see, see kingdom, kingdom work, work, I hear I it at night. We got to allow the spirit of God to show it to us. 
That's, That's my, my comment, comment right now. I want to make a comment. Amen. Praise the Lord. I can absolutely uh, uh, see it um, in the scriptures where we, and it was a key word that came out as uh, Evangelist Hannah was talking. And it's, 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 it's the word is state, depending on the state that one finds themselves in. A lot of times when we look at the Psalms, we have the different Psalms. And, 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 and as you study the Psalms, a lot of them, whether they be laminate, you know, they were, you start out as a laminate and end up in a praise world. The one that gave us this evening, you see, it, it kind of, it automatically right off the bat where it is, it gave that impression right up front, but then it went, went right into a praise right off, the, right off the bat. Well, so now, depending on the state of the people, whether they're coming out of bondage or whether they're in bondage, whether there's one where they're crying out for God, for whatever reason, I don't want to get into those specific reasons because it kind of starts skewing and isolating the, the, the comment. Holistically, we see the state where it is that now whether either they were obedient to God and, as they, and, they're, and, they're, and they're operating in belief and they're doing the things that God called them to do. Well, you see now where we see from a ritual or practice standpoint, we see some things that were done. So we because, we, you know, we got that maintenance that we do. We're always praying. We're not always crying out. Right. Sometimes we find ourselves, depending on our state, we're crying out. Sometimes we're praying. You go into you, you praying a prayer of praise and thanks. Do you not? Yes. God, thank you. Amen. For waking me up this morning. Yes. You know, Lamina, God, thank you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? For a, a for a for for the revelation uh that you gave me yesterday, last night mm -hmm. in my sleep. Yeah, thank you, Father. Well, we see as just as then where it is that where they had received the word of God, sometimes we see where it is they were operating what according to God's word, God with them, right? That the word that God had given them. And then likewise we see now where it is God in us, a lot of time that which has been revealed to us, we're operating according to what the Holy Spirit just to give a uh, you know, uh, uh, just walk the lane between then and now. But at the same time, we see then where it is a lot of time they will find themselves what transgressing those that are his, meaning the people of God called out to God. He's responsible to keep them. But we see sometimes for whatever the reason, he'd hand them over. Right. Mm -hmm. The scripture tell us. Right. You know, what I'm saying, you know, because of the things that they, they had done or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. And then we see. But all to what? For his glory to draw them back. What? To him, and then they would cry out to God, and God would be what faithful to restore them. Glory to God. Well, so likewise, we see the same thing for us. We see from a spiritual standpoint where it is now we are His. We've been redeemed, and sometimes we find ourselves in ourselves, and we'll cry out in our own mess. And is not God faithful to forgive us and, and, and restore us? Amen. 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 I like I like how how David he knew he was wrong. Why? Because, and, and we're, we're right here at Psalms 51 and 11, but we're going to go up and it says how David knew that he was wrong. Why? Because now he done had intimate relationship with Bathsheba. And Bathsheba now has become pregnant and now he, he done had Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, killed. So even though he knew he should have been at, bat at, at battle with them, he decided he was not going to go, and he committed sin against God. But now you done committed adultery, you done had sex with somebody else's wife, and David knew that he was wrong. And then the prophet came to him and let him know that, hey, your sin has been uncovered because God done revealed it to me. I'm just paraphrasing it, but that is what's going on. His sin has been uncovered Nathan is telling him giving him paraphrasing uh giving him what an example of of a situation and David knew that hey I'm that one I'm that one I have sinned against the Lord it says Nathan rebukes the wayward king and coming to true revelation David confesses he knew he was wrong, and he confessed his sins. It says, David understood the weight of his transgression and began to seek the Lord for mercy, for forgiveness, and for reconciliation. If you have a relationship with God and you know that you have committed iniquity, you know you have committed sins, you know you have transgressed against God, you, you got that intimate relationship with him, and you have just stumbled. You have fallen. But if you got that intimate relationship with God, you should be able to go to the Father and ask him for 
forgiveness. This is still yet experiencing God in prayer. Why? Because I know that I can go boldly to the throne of grace. I know that I can go to the Father and ask the Father to forgive me, and he will reconcile me back unto him. It says, there we go. Now it says, cast me not away from your presence. How many of us want to be out of the presence of God? How many of us want to be out of the will of God? If you're out of the will of God, you're going to not be in the presence of God because are you really hearing from God when you're not doing the will of the Father? So here we go. Now David is asking, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. We all want the comforter to be with us at all times. We want the Holy Spirit to dwell within us at all all times at all times we want to ensure that we're doing what the word of god says yes sir amen praise the lord i just got happy i was sitting over there say you know looking at it, i say man there's static on the line amen i was looking at it's not that the line does not exist amen of communication is that because you, you hit the spirit of god it's, it's, it's static on the line so i'm looking i was reading 50 uh psalms 51 and one it says wash me thoroughly mm -hmm. what from my i already used the iniquity and mm -hmm. cleanse me what from my sin, amen, yeah. glory to God, that's, that's two, and then, uh, then if you go down to verse seven, it says what, purge me with what hyssop, yes. and I shall be clean, mm -hmm. wash me, and I shall be wither, uh, um, than, whiter than snow, mm -hmm. then if you go down to verse 12, then, it, then it, we talk about that restoration, it says, restore unto me what, the joy of thy salvation, salvation. amen, yes. I want you, he is, he, he's, he's, you know, say, restore that, let, let me experience it, God, I need that joy, amen, because yes. now I don't, they're static on the line, glory mm -hmm. to God. I need that joy, amen, that which I know that I have in you, but guess what, I, you know what I'm saying, I've chosen to transgress, I've yes. chosen to, amen, eat on some other table, he said, look, he said, he said, and uphold me with what, thy that free spirit, spirit. glory yes. to God, I love it. And then we go down to, as I read in, in, uh, in 19, then shall thou be what, pleased with thee, sacrifices, yes. 19, of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullets upon thy altar. Amen. Yes. So yes. I see you here, amen, as you were talking about, I, I got to have say, you know, right you know, in, in the Psalms, you know, he, he's like, man, he's acknowledging his state. Yes. I done messed up. Yes. Amen. Amen. And he said, but you know what? I say now, but but I but I do know and I do believe that, you know, what I can be restored. Amen. If I just what? To my God, the living God. He's now he now he's calling out to God. His plea is to the Father. Amen. Is in, in, in fifty one, and then and then we see his belief. He said, "Look, God, look, if you just restore me with a clean heart, now I'm asking that you just restore me so that I may experience your joy. Yes. Amen. Because now I lost my peace. Amen. I've done, done something. Now I, I'm tormented. Now, Amen. Mm -hmm. Because I've transgressed against you. Amen. That I may what be seen what righteous in you." Just by getting back in line, now I got to get the static off the line. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And if you see here, and, and, and that tie right in with, with where I'm getting ready to go now, and it was dealing with Samuel and Eli and Eli's sons. So here we go. David confessed what he did, mother. But then all of a sudden, we're dealing with Samuel, we're dealing with Eli, we're dealing with Hophni, and we're dealing with Phineas. Now, Eli was the priest. Samuel, his name means heard of God. Heard of, that's what his name means. Samuel means heard of God. So all of a sudden, now, Hannah done dedicated her son over to God, and, and Samuel is now living in the temple under Eli's tutelage. So here we go. Eli knows what his sons are doing. Why? Because they are doing some stuff that's wicked and against the will of God, against what God has commanded. So if Eli knows what his sons are doing and you don't do anything about it, you don't say anything to them, God already had someone else that was going to be next in line. So all of a sudden, God is now calling Samuel's name. So we're seeing here, he's under Eli's tutelage. 
But now God is calling Samuel by name. And Samuel does not know the voice of God at this time. But now Samuel is beginning to hear Samuel, Samuel. So it's just like someone saying, Stacy, Stacy. And I do not know. I'm like, I'm running to my mom. Mom, what's going on? You are calling me. And she said, no, I'm not. I am not calling you. But now all of a sudden, you come to me. I run to my mom three times because that's what Eli did and that's what Samuel did to Eli. And all of a sudden, Eli realized that, hey, that's God calling Samuel. Because at that moment, at that time, Samuel did not know the voice of God. So he kept running to the priest who was Eli. Why? Because he thought that Eli was calling for him. And when God gave him the instructions of what he was to tell Eli, the priest, it was to the point where God had already revealed it to Eli what was going to happen. He had already revealed it. So it was just nothing but confirmation of what Samuel had to share with him. And how many of us, God, you have this intimate relationship with God and God is saying, I want you to go and say this. But then all of a sudden in the midst of, now you, you hear the voice of God and you know, you, if you have that intimate relationship, there's no doubt in your mind that God is speaking to you. But then all of a sudden, mother, he tells you to go and tell Elder Edward something. But we see here, Samuel, he decided that, hey, I'm going to get up and do the things that I normally would do. Um, normally, I would go to Eli first. But Samuel decided he wanted to open up the tabernacle first which was something that was out of the ordinary. Now we see Eli, he, had, he was blind at this, at this time. He had become old. He, he grew real old at this time. So normally Samuel would go to him. But at this time, Samuel decided that, hey, I'm going to open up the tabernacle. So how is it that I have a word, but I really don't want to share this word? This is a hard word right here that I have to share with the one who has been tutoring me. Now I have to go to him and share this word. This is not easy for me to say. Uh, can uh, I? Can I? Yes, sir. Sister, sister. Oh, you got me dancing, sister. You got me dancing. Talk, talk. talk, talk that, that word. word. Uh, uh, I just, just want, want to put a tidbit in there. In there. You, you own, own it. it. The, 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 the words, words say, say, I'm reading from my life. Huh, change, change, right, boy. Uh, uh, it's it's now, now Samuel ministered, ministered to, the to the Lord before Eli, Eli like, like you say, was under tutoring. It said, said the word of the Lord was rare, rare in those days. days. You hit the, you hit the issue. Yes. The, word the word always, always who, was who was there to minister the word of God to his people? Was it not the priest? You just define something that we don't like to talk about today. The priest, instead of listening for God, whatever, he had, he had begun, begun to, to indulge, indulge in wickedness, in wickedness because, because of his, of his son, son or whatever, whatever, and he, he could, could not hear experience, experience God. God. The, the Bible, Bible said it was very rare, rare in those days mm -hmm. to receive a revelation. Yes. But you hear something, something, you hear something very powerful. powerful. I don't know if you know it or not. But Samuel was under the tutor of who? But yet he had never experienced God because it never come through him. It always came through who? The priest. So, so therefore, therefore, he, he went, went according, according to the structure, structure to the priest. To the priest. Yes. I like, I like something you say. You Eli, Eli finally realized, realized Samuel, Samuel had now, now got a revelation. Yes. Because, because he, he didn't, didn't call. call. Mm. Now, I, I, you, you put a little you twist, twist on it. I kind of do it a little different, but I love when you did it. I think Eli was very curious what the Lord had to say, was he not? Go on with, with it. it. Hey, hey, I love, I love it. it. I love it. But, but see, see that's, that's why, why I, I, made I made the statement, statement early. early. Look, look at each one of these lessons. Look at the contrast. contrast. And, and each, each one, one of these situations, situations when there was in prayer, prayer or whatever, whatever and, and with sincere, sincere heart, heart, David, David you talked about, about, 
Psalm 51. 51. David, the David wrote, wrote that, that song before he could get, get to that, that point. point. Who had, who had that, that let David, David know what his sin was? He didn't run from it. So my question, how can we go to God? We're supposed to go to him in a sincere heart with sin in us and expect to experience God with evil. When David, when David was approached, was approached he, he acknowledged his state. state. He, he asked, asked for forgiveness. forgiveness. And, after and after that, that he appealed, appealed to God, God for, for restoring, restoring and, his and his joy and peace. peace. I, like I like that. That's a pattern, pattern there. there. Thank, Thank you. you. Amen. I like verse one, how you broke that down, uh, Evangelist Hand, and it says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And we see here a vision is a divine revelation met, me, meditated through an auditory or visual encounter. And we see here, Mother, that this was an auditory encounter that Samuel was having now we see that it was saying there was that this was precious in those days and the word of the Lord was precious in those days why because there was no open vision we see here God is speaking very little we see why Eli was not dealing with his sons according to to their sins and we got our children our very own children that's messing up and we don't want to speak what God has given us it says to train up a child in the way that he should go and when he is old he will not depart so if you know that God is speaking to you tell your child this this and this but you're not wanting to say anything to them but then when God starts dealing with them, oh God don't take them away from me oh God don't do x y and z but God has already given you the word to give to your children but because oh I love them so much and I don't want and I don't want there to be any issues between me and my child, so I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to keep letting them do what it is that they want to do. But that's not of God. You spare the rod, you spoil the child. So here we go. We see now Samuel, he had to share what it was that God had given to him. And like I said, that was a hard word. And Eli, his response was, whatever is, seems good for him, basically let it be done. So we know that Eli's sons, they were killed in battle. And we know that Eli, he fell back and he did die. But that was a hard word that Samuel felt that he had to give to Eli and Eli had told him that hey if you don't tell me what God has said to you then may it be worse on you than what it is that you were supposed to have said to me are there any questions any comments at this time sister teacher yes sir you know one thing I learned in life is once you experience God in prayer and this, and this is something that never, ever, ever since I talk very often about. about. You will you never, never, ever be the same again. You know? And, and what you're talking, talking about, about uh, Samuel, Samuel, the, the first, first time you heard the Lord speak to you. You know, you and then we go back and really um, scrutinize our life. We will realize that God was speaking to us even when we were in season. We may, we may didn't know, know it was God at the time, time, you know, but one thing I learned as I got saved is once you experience the presence of God in prayer, you will never help be the same. Amen. Amen. It says, to experience the presence of God, the believer must be honest with him. It says in Psalms 51 and 6, Behold, thou desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So it says, Psalms 51 and 6, let the believers know that God desires truth in the inward parts. It is difficult to connect with God when there is dishonesty 
So just come clean with God and let him know exactly what is going on in your life and your spirit. God already knows what is going on, but he wants each of us to be accountable partners. So when you know that you have messed up, when you know that you have done wrong, God just, he already knows. He just wants you to come to him. I have committed this iniquity. I have sinned against thee, and thee only have I sinned. God wants us to come to him and ask for forgiveness to get it right with him. It says in the inward parts, God desires truth. So on the inside, God desires truth. Will you be truthful? God already knows, so you might as well go and tell the truth. Confess it and get it right with him. Amen. Are there any comments at this time? Uh, I just like to make one comment. Oh, the pastor do a powerful statement there. He had me thinking, but I, he said, God was speaking to us even when we was in sin. That is so true. But uh, he did the calling. The question has become, we experience him. What do we do now? That choice. Will we choose him, righteousness, truth, the way, and life, like you're talking about? That is so true. That choice is always there. He's always been speaking. He's been speaking from the beginning of time. That which he created, he wanted to have a relationship with. He's always been speaking. The question is, who's listening? And who is accepting? Amen. Are you listening? Are you being obedient? Are you listening to what God is saying to you? Yes, ma'am, mother. Um, praise the Lord. Um, as I'm listening, you can also say um, it's a test. Um, God wants to see because, like you say, he already knows anyway. But he wants to see are you going to come to him and be truthful in the court of law naturally so when you go to court and you put your hand on the Bible and you, you know, say you're gonna tell the truth and nothing but the truth, you know, and that's what, that's what you're there to, to, to do. Uh, and it's a, it's a crime if you don't tell the truth. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we uh, go to, to God and we, we know that we have messed up, uh, are you gonna go to him in prayer and be truthful? Because like you say, he already know anyway. Yes. So it's a test. What what are you gonna do here? Are you gonna choose you to stay who you're gonna serve? Because if you go to God with the untruth or half truth, it's a lie. It's not the truth. So I mean, you can't go to them half stepping. When you're gonna tell the tell it, you gotta tell the whole thing you know, and be honest and be true because he is a loving God. He's a forgiving God. So all you need to do is go to him and ask for forgiveness. Tell the truth and put your all on the altar because he said if you lean on him, he won't let you fall. Amen. Amen. It says many believers have found that when they rise early in the morning, before they begin their affairs for the day, when their minds are not cluttered with the busyness of the day, it's one of the best times to meet with God and experience his presence in their prayer time. For it's in the morning that a believer's ears, eyes, and hearts are more open to meet with God. How many of us say, I'm going to wait, I'm going to wait until tonight to say my <laughs> prayers, but God is saying, I want you to meet me early in the morning. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. God wants us to meet him early in the morning. Why? Because we can be, now I'm going to God at night, so now I'm tired because of everything I had to do throughout the day, and I'm still like I didn't accomplish everything that I wanted to accomplish. My mind is busy because I'm trying to make a list of everything I may have to do, Lord's will, everything I may have to do the next day, 
And where am I trying to fit God in anything that I'm saying that I have to do for the next day? God is saying that he wants, don't give God sloppy seconds. Don't give him sloppy seconds. God wants our best. Now, if you want that relationship with God, God, give God your best. Give him your best because that's what he desires. Yes, sir? Yeah. One thing, Psalm 66, 66 verse 18, 18 says, says that if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. So one thing that we have to do, and I thank God for everything I'm hearing from you all, is we have to get the cat out the line as a metaphor. You know, and the reason our prayers are not being heard, and we're not experiencing God in our prayer, as you have already been articulating, is we're not being totally honest with God. And so Psalm 66 verse 18 says, if I regard you in the heart, God is not going to hear me. Thank you. Amen. I'd just like to comment, uh, Sister, uh, uh, you couldn't have said a better statement early in the morning. And I'm, and I'm guilty, guilty sometimes sometime because, because I have some thoughts, thoughts on my mind. I want to do not jump, jump straight up. up. Then all, all of a sudden, sudden um, I, get I get rebuked. rebuked. I, did I did not, not give, give God, God his glory, glory when I got, got up. up. But, but I can, I can tell, tell you this. this. You're, You're right. right. As, as I get I up and state, state the Lord's Prayer, I meditate on it. This is the day he has made me. Help me to rejoice and be glad they're in it. And when, and when I focus, I focus on, on that, that sister, sister, in scriptures, and, and as you and talk about, the more, more you study, study and the more you read your Bible, Bible scriptures, scriptures come to my mind throughout, throughout the day. day. Even, Even when, when I find myself sometimes sometime maybe disconnect, disconnect that's I say, Lord, Lord, thank you. And he'll bring a scripture to my mind. And I might find myself asking, Lord, forgive me. But I love what you say. It's got to start early in the morning. When I put him call out, out on him and give him thanks, thanks whatever. whatever the thing question becomes how well i do throughout the day based on what i started with him in the morning yes but then i, I love what you're saying but i gotta put more in me and, and, and that which is in me he'll bring back to my remembrance uh, the pastor right i cannot hide iniquity in my heart expect to hear from him because i'm his child does not, not warn him. War will come before, come before uh, destruction, destruction or whatever. whatever. He'll, He'll let, let me know if I'm in error. Now, the, now question the question is, will I be honest, honest as the pastor, and what will, will I, do? I do? I already I told my good, good friend, friend, I'm always open, open before him, him is another word I use, I won't use my mind. How well can I get with my brothers and sisters? Thank you. Amen. It says God deeply desires a relationship with us, a personal relationship with each of us. As he is at work around us at all times. It says just as he walked with Adam and Eve in the garden and he communed with them, God wants to commune with us as well. He wants to have that relationship with us to where we have that open dialogue with him. He, we talk to him, he talks back to us. We listen to him, he listens to us. We have to be obedient and do what it is that he has said for us to do. God desires fellowship and communication with us will you be obedient and do what it is that God has says to do but thou but thou art holy O thou inhabitants the praises of Israel God inhabits our praises God loves when we praise him we were created to give God worship we were created to give God praise to experience God in Prayer is something when you can be in the presence of God and you don't want to leave that time that you are spending with God. Are there any more questions, any more comments at this time? 
We just want to say that we truly thank God for each one of you who have spoken on tonight. We thank God for the words of wisdom that you have shared with us on tonight. And we're going to go ahead on and close out if there's no other comments, no more questions at this time. Most like gracious. Gracious. Yes, sir. I just, I want, just want to thank, thank God, God for using you tonight. Uh, uh, my, my, I'm, I'm full of joy the way you outline this thing, how you let God use you. And your, and your comments, comments and, and, and as you brought it to then and, and now, now as you, you use application. application. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm full. I, I, I can I lay down at night and, and be in peace. peace. <laughs> Amen. Amen, Evangelist Andy. We truly thank God for you, sir. We just want to say we truly thank God for this Bible study lesson on tonight, having a right relationship, communicating with God, experiencing God in prayer, having that one-on-one -on -one time with God in prayer. Don't get too busy to where you can't hear from God or you don't want to communicate with God because God wants to communicate with you. So at this time, we're going to go ahead on and close out in prayer. There's no more comments, no more questions at this time. We truly thank God once again for each one of you who have communicated with us. Most heavenly and gracious Father God, we just want to say thank you. We thank you for the word of God on tonight, oh God, experiencing you in prayer, having that relationship, that intimate relationship with you on tonight, oh God. God, help us to be more intimate with you. Help us to have that desire like never before to communicate with you even the more, even now in the name of Jesus. Help us not to get so busy throughout the day that we would not pray unto you, that we would not give your name glory, oh God. God, we just want to say thank you. We're asking that you grant us traveling grace and traveling mercies as we go to our different destinations oh god god continue to show us us in thy son jesus name we pray amen and amen thank you for attending this awesome service please join us via facebook or youtube be sure to subscribe to our youtube page and select the bell symbol so you'll be notified when we go live Again, on behalf of Pastor Joe L. Newsom and First Lady Annette Newsom, thank you for attending. Come fellowship with us again, and may God bless you.